Blacks in Technology. Black, 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 blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Welcome, everybody, to the Blacks in Technology Big Tech Talk podcast, the show where we talk to and spotlight black engineers, innovators, educators, inventors, and entrepreneurs doing amazing things in the world of technology. Uh, this podcast is where they share with our audience their experiences, their ideas, and their knowledge, and their perspective on tech uh, and, our, and our place in it. Uh, I'm your host, Greg Greenlee. Um, the founder of Blacks and Technology. If this is your first time listening, you can check us out at www.blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, you can also check us out uh, on the Twitters. We are at Black and Technology, and that's B-L-K-I-N-T-E-C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y. We're also on Facebook, and that's uh, facebook.com forward slash Blacks and Technology. And we also have a LinkedIn group under Blacks and Technology. If you are on Twitter right now, if you have any questions for our guests, tweet them to us using the hashtag BitTechTalk, B-I-T-T-E-C-H-T-A-L-K. So Blacks and Technology, we are the largest online community of technology professionals and enthusiasts for people of color. Our goal is to provide a space for motivation and inspiration by providing some career advice, sharing success stories, spotlighting the accomplishment of people of color in tech within our community, and much more. We aim to increase visibility and participation of people of the African descent in technology. And we do this through community-focused activities, events, and media. Uh, We are also always focused on forming new partnerships and opportunities to assist our members with their continued professional growth and development. So if you want to partner with us, you can send us an email to partnerships at blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, if you have any general inquiries, you just want to know a little bit more about Blacks and Technology, uh, send us an email to info at blacksandtechnology.net. And if you want to sponsor one of these podcasts and get your, your product or your company or your organization uh, in front of our wide audience, you can shoot us an email to sponsorship at blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, as far as announcements go, there are just a couple. So... Uh, remember, DevOps Days Ohio is happening November 18th and 19th. Uh, it's happening in Columbus, Ohio. Um, there, the call for papers or uh, proposals has closed, but we still are um, going to be raffling off some tickets or giving away some tickets to that event. So if you're interested, uh, shoot us an email uh, to contact us at blacksandtechnology.net. That's November 18th and 19th. Next week is Puppet Conf 2015. That is happening in Portland, Oregon. Uh, let's see. We will be having a meetup there. I think that's going to happen on Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. It's going to be inside the conference. And the last time we were at PuppetConf, we had a meetup outside of uh, PuppetConf, and it was uh, in San Francisco. But this time, uh, Puppet Labs is providing some space for us to have a uh, black technology meetup. So that will be happening next Wednesday. Uh, I think there is um, something uh, after registration and everything like that. Then, you know, once the evening activities start, start happening, that's when our, um, our meetup is going to uh, be held. So if you uh, just go to uh, Puppet Comps or Puppet Labs and go to their, uh, the, their conference website and you can click on schedules and you can see on Wednesday at 630 and it will show you which room um, that meetup will be held in. All right, uh, so tonight our special guest, or our guest is going to be uh, Zakia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is, is that Zakia? That's correct. Zakia Harris. Um, this is going to be a really good podcast because we're going to be talking about um, the organization Hack the Hood, where she is the co founder and the chief education officer. Uh, she's an award winning, non- which is an award winning nonprofit that introduces low income youth of color to careers in tech by hiring and training them to build web- websites for real small businesses in their own community. Uh, I think that's uh, a, a great uh, organization and a great mission. So I want to uh, bring on the show, show Zakia Harris. Thanks, uh, Zakia, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So you are out of Oakland, home of uh, 
home of uh, Souls of Mischief. The Black Panthers. Home, yeah. Home of Black Panthers. Home of uh, yeah. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard Golden is, State uh, Warriors. Champions. Golden State Warriors. You know. That's right. Yeah, they they beat they beat uh they beat the Ohio team. I'm I'm out of Ohio, so you know, I got had mixed feelings about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um yeah, so home of a lot of great hip hop artists. Uh too short. Who else? E forty I think is is he out of Oakland? Uh Bay Area uh, Vallejo. Oh uh, Bay Area, okay. Uh Hammer. Well, there you what? go. Uh, Tony, 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 in Vogue, The Whispers, Pointer Sisters, Guapalay. Oh, wow. Uh, I did not know that. Count, count Zakia Harris on the list. I'm a vocalist as well. So, yeah, a lot of okay. music and art and culture is alive in this town for sure. Excellent, excellent. And, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna actually talk about, uh, about your, um, your career in the arts a little bit. Uh, but but first, uh, give us a little bit of insight uh, uh, into your background and your education. Yeah, so I'm an Oakland native. I was on a path to go to law school and dropped out about midway and decided that I had a passion for being a teacher, an educator. Um, so pretty much for the last 15 years, my entire professional career, I have worked for or on behalf of young people, particularly young people of color in diverse communities. I've worked in nonprofit settings. I've been a classroom teacher. Um, I've been in startup communities. I've also worked as a consultant. So I just have a passion for um, empowering the next generation of leaders to have the skills to succeed um, in the future. Excellent, excellent. Sounds like you've uh, held a variety of different positions uh, along your journey. Um, so, what going through that journey? Like, what type of what? What are some? Uh, how can I put this? Um, I know each one of these these journeys, although or each one of the jobs, although they kind of pertain in, uh, to the same thing or what your mission is. What are, what are some of the I guess some of the differences that uh, uh, some of the different things that these different jobs along the way has offered you as far as like motivating you to, to, you know, co-found something like hack the hood. That's a great question. I think my trajectory began literally in the classroom. Um, I used to live in New York and I started teaching at PS 397 in Brooklyn, New York as a classroom teacher. And I think, as I began to delve into the nonprofit world and working in the after school mm-hmm. setting, I've been more and more committed to working with young people, working with young people and as completely independent of a school structure um, and also creating platforms to be able to engage young people directly and not have to kind of work within that red tape and to utilize um, culturally relevant approaches to really engage young people. And I think, the misconception, whether I've worked on environmental issues or food issues or even technology, the misconception is always like, oh, my God, young people are into that. And I would say it's the opposite. They're so into it. Our young people are so brilliant. They basically can do anything if they're given the tools and the access and you make learning fun. And that's been something that I've learned along the way, that young people want to learn. They do care about the planet. They do care about their future. They are wanting to make a change. I mean, I think young people get a bad rap, honestly, and particularly when we start talking about youth of color and underserved communities, there's this sense that, you know, young people don't care and they don't have motivation. And that, in my entire career, that's never been the case. And I've worked nationally as well as globally. And I've always seen um, really, really young people that have been empowered and excited to learn. Um, And I think that's because I'm able to package it in a way that is – supportive of that that's excellent that's excellent so how did how did that all transition into you coming into uh, uh the technology side of, uh, of of education um well two years ago i was approached by um my co-founder susan mernet and she comes from the tech industry and she was very disappointed with the gap that she was seeing happen in the bay area there's all this tech hype and movement and momentum, but there's also a lot of people who are really been left out of that process. 
And so she had a brainchild of how to connect young people with very low-hanging fruit tech skills so they can empower their communities. And so, as you said so, earlier, uh, uh, what, what do you mean by low, just, just for our audience sake, what do you mean by yeah. low-hanging fruit tech? So we engage young people in a summer boot camp, and we're also doing the boot camp year-round. And in that boot camp, we teach young people to build websites, and they build those websites for local small businesses. So when I okay. say low-hanging fruit, I'm referring to the fact that these are digital natives. These young people are on their phone. They're on Twitter. They're already using social media. They're already using technology. They're using it more as consumers but not creative. But that right. language and that, that language and way of engaging technology is already there. So it's very much low-hanging fruit. And in six weeks, we pair them with local businesses in their community. So your local mom and pop shop, your local barber shop, your local cleaners, your local florists, some artists, some um, entrepreneurs who don't have websites, who aren't on Google, who don't show up in Yelp, who are, un who are invisible. And with the new economic development that's happening in Oakland and many cities across the country, there's a lot of folks that aren't able to really tap in into the changes that are going on in their city because when people now want to find stuff, they go online, and a lot of local small businesses are not online. So we're allowing young people to feel empowered by the fact that these are businesses that they walk past every day. They're developing a business, a relationship with these as, as these are their clients. And through the relationships that they've built, they're able to have a portfolio of their work that they can share. They're able to deepen their connections and walk away with a portfolio of work that's real, that's hands-on, and relationships that they've built. It really changes the power dynamic around how most 16, 17, 8-year-olds feel when they walk into a business, right? Sometimes they don't even feel welcome. And now you have business right. owners who are so happy and so humbled by the fact that they're like, you know what, I don't even want to think about my website. I created 30 years ago, or I need to create it, or I don't know how to redo it. And here you have this young person who's super tech and savvy and can really um, – address that for them. And so we found that really powerful relationships have been built out of that. Um, and what, during that boot camp experience, we also take young people on field trips, to places like Pandora and Facebook and Google. We pair them with mentors, many of whom are from their communities, folks of color. Um, we give them soft skills training on entrepreneurship, on social enterprise, on public speaking. We talk about navigational and social capital. So they really have a new lens and a new language to think about their next step. And then we also have a new set of programs that we're developing, really next step programs. And so some of our young people are developing a video game around trauma because that's something that they're passionate about. We have other young people who continue to be web designers for small business clients, and now they're like, hey, you can pay me $25, $30 an hour, and I'm 18, I'm going to continue to do this work, and they actually have real clients. We have other folks that are now going into coding programs. We have young people who are rethinking their majors or deciding to go to college to, to major in engineering because now they mm -hmm. actually see themselves and see that there's a place for them in technology as creative. And how powerful is is that? I mean, I wish I was making twenty five to three dollars an hour when I was eighteen years old. Um, but just you know, not only are you uh, are you uh, helping uh, the local economy and these local businesses get up to speed with their technology and their presence on the internet, but you're you're equipping uh, these these young people with skills that they can that they can hone and take with them anywhere now, and they can get jobs or they can continue their education and, or further their education. Um, uh, you know, whether it's college or uh, whether it's, you know, getting an internship at, you know, some some uh, some company out that way. Uh, so you guys are really doing some great and some empowering work. Um, so exactly. I just like to add to that. And I think that's such a mm -hmm. wonderful point. I think a lot of times we talk about the tech industry as an industry that is separate. But the reality is for young people growing up in the world today, Every job is part of the tech industry because there is no job, there is right. no career that you are going to have where technology is not at the center, and it is imperative that we make sure that every community has access to those tools. So thank you for bringing that up. No, no problem, no problem. That's a great point. Um, so, um, so you told us a little bit about Hack the Hood, and, and 
let, let's get a little bit um, more into what your role is there. Uh, so tell us what it exactly is a chief education officer? <laughs> That's a great question. So basically I write all of our curriculum. I build okay. teams, uh, curriculum teams as well that support me in that. Everything from this very technical skill of what it means to build a website. We use the Weebly platform to build websites, and then from there we introduce mm -hmm. coding. We have great relationships with a lot of the tech companies and technologists, so I'm able to pull from great experts in the field. And I kind of help them translate that information to a youth audience, knowing what are best practices in youth development and education, how can we make this innovative, how can we make sure that it's interactive, how can we make sure that it's culturally relevant, that there's multimedia, that they're not just sitting there like school and they're actually excited and empowered. And then I also create our soft skills training, which touch on the future of work, thinking about your navigational capital, right? You not, nowadays, it's not just enough to have the technical skills. You actually have to have the ability to move from one step to another. Nowadays, it's not yeah. enough just to have a college degree. You have to have a social network. You have to be able to talk to people outside of your comfort zone. Your social network needs to reach other economic levels that for a lot of folks that live in underserved communities, they're only dealing with their bubble. Um, you have to be able to speak. You have to be able to stand up in a room and speak with confidence and be okay with who you are. We talk about personal branding. The first website that our young people create for themselves, uh, create is their own website. And from there, we start having conversations about what does your online uh, profile look like? When you're, think when you're posting on Facebook, do you realize that future employers are now trolling through your Facebook account. When you're throwing stuff on Instagram and Twitter, are you thinking about your brand? Do you know what it is? And if you don't create your brand, someone will create it for you. So those are also part of the trainings that I put together for our 60 boot camp. I also supervise our work in other cities. Um, we won the Google Impact Challenge a year ago, so we are working in San Francisco and Richmond, East Palo Alto and Watsonville. We're also piloting our first high school program right now that I oversee. Um, we have an accelerator program for our young people after our boot camp experience where we support them in internships and jobs and additional training opportunities. And we're um, next month, actually this month, it's October now, we're going to be launching a brand new program um, called, with, Google, with Google, and it's a Google AdWords certification program where young people will get certified in Google AdWords, the same certification that Google staff get, and when they're done with that, they will get an internship at a tech company that's paid. So I support all of that and do a lot of translation. I'm kind of the bridge between the work that happens on the ground, I supervise all of our instructors that work in our boot camps and also um, our partners. So what don't you all do? <laughs> now, you said you guys sound like you do. I mean, yeah, you guys, it sounds like you have everything covered from, uh, from beginning to end because, you know, you, you see uh, some organizations, they deal with, you know, the initial part of, of the journey and the journey is, you know, the introduction to technology and awareness and things like that. Uh, but then they kind of fall flat on, on the latter end, uh, which is now that you've, you've got these skills, you know, kind of what do you do with them? Uh, how do you even, you know, how do you, how do you gain these soft skills that are needed? Um, uh, right. You know, what, what, and, and I like one thing that you, that you, uh, that you pointed out about branding, uh, you know, you said brand yourself before, or or someone will do it for you. And I think that's real powerful because I, I always tell people, any anyone that I engage in technology who, uh, who may be new to technology or may be looking to um, uh, move up or, you know, uh, uh, move up a, with a career move or something like that, I always tell them, you know, start a blog. If you are, if, if I tell anybody who is a person of color in tech uh, to start a blog. And the reason why I tell them that is it's kind of twofold. One, uh, it allows you to, uh, to expound on the knowledge and the expertise that you have uh, and get that out to a wider audience. Uh, but the second part of that is it allows you to brand yourself. And then that kind of changes this whole perception of, what people think, uh, you know, an engineer or, or an entrepreneur or developer or whatever, 
looks like because now you're mm-hmm. taking control of that perception instead of letting somebody else come in and, and, and take control of that. Um, and so, yeah, I, like so that. I think, that's, yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's, I think it's key. It's, it's one of the things that blocks and technology has always been kind of focused on. And that's that, uh, that, not only the visibility part, so the visibility part of it is get yourself out there, get yourself uh, seen in some way. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be out there speaking or whatever, but maybe, you know, putting up a blog post or, you know, mentoring somebody or whatever. And then let that be that, that change of perception. Let that, because now you're, you're, you're controlling your own brand uh, and, and you're not allowing whoever to say, this is what an engineer it's supposed to look like it's supposed to dress. This is the type of music they're supposed to listen to. These are the events they should be attending. You're doing that yourself and you're taking control and, and, and you're, you're changing perceptions on that front. So. Exactly. That's, so building, building a successful nonprofit is, is pretty hard work. Um, I know that, you know, firsthand that it's, it's a lot of work and it's hard work. So what, what inspires you to continue on, on this journey from day to day? Well, I definitely want to give credit to um, my other fellow co-founders, Susan Mernit and Mary Fuller. I get to do okay. a lot of on the ground work with program development and, and I don't have to do as much fundraising work and they're really, really good with that. I have to say in terms of Hack the Hood's momentum I would, and, and success, I would relate it to several things. The first thing I would say is place. We are located in the technology center of the planet. We are in the Bay Area and increasingly, we used to say we were in technology's back door, but now literally we can honestly say it's in our front door. Um, Uber, as a matter of fact, had just bought one of the largest buildings, historic buildings in Oakland, California. And next yeah. year they're going to be moving 3,000 employees into, into our city. You know, we also, Pandora Radio is also located in Oakland. Um, and yep. so we're literally on the ground. So many of, so much of the gentrification and the displacement that is happening around the country, but particularly in the Bay Area, is directly related to the tech industry. And so I mm-hmm. think that place, even though you can talk about that as, um, a challenge, we've actually been able to turn it into an opportunity because that means we have direct, we've been able to build direct relationships with the tech industry because they're right here. Also, we're part of a movement of other organizations like Hidden Genius Project and Kino Labs and Black Girls Code. We're all based in Oakland. We all work together. We all know each other. We all get to go to these tech companies together and say, hey, right. what are you doing <laughs> around diversity in tech? So our location, I think, has definitely led to our success. Also, um, being the winners of the Google Impact Challenge last year um, really kind of just put us on the map in a whole different way and allowed our work to thrive. And so I think a combination of timing, location, and a really great idea have been in, in, in collaborating and thinking outside the box has been really our recipe for success. Very, very nice. And, and shout out to uh, those organizations, Black Girl Code. I think I had somebody from every one of those organizations except Kino Labs uh, on this show. Oh, wow. uh, oh, awesome. Yeah, uh, Jason, Jason Young. I've had uh, uh, Kimberly Bryant. She's She's been on the show. Awesome. Yeah, so, I saw yeah. Jason last night. That's amazing. Very, very nice. Yeah, so, um, so that's great. Uh, so what – uh, I know we talked about, you know, a lot about uh, what your organization does. So, what what's your, what's your what's the mission? What's the like official mission uh, of of uh, Hack the Hood? Our mission, the mission of Hack the Hood, is to engage young people in the tech industry by empowering them with skills to up level their trajectory and take them to the next level. You know. We are different in that many of our colleagues are all about coding, you know, or all about programming. And that's actually not the approach that we take. We believe that just like white kids who come from affluent neighborhoods, every young person Mm -hmm. has the opportunity to choose what they want to do. And some of the young people are really into coding and some of our young people aren't. They might be into marketing. They might be into sales. It does, again, it doesn't really matter because as I said, 
the tech industry is so large. We just want them to understand that there is a this shift that we're living in from from the digital age is la the largest shift that we've ever encountered. It's larger than the industrial revolution. You know, we are moving, and they are our young people are are going to receive, you know, this new economy that we're living in. And so, especially because in places like Oakland, California, we want to make sure that they understand what's going on. Our, one of our first classes is what is technology, Tech Ecosystem 101. There's young people who are walking down the street in Oakland, California with their headphones on, listening to Pandora, and don't even know that they walk past Pandora. Um, this <laughs> wow. is another company that is located. When we start asking them to connect the dots, okay, well, wait a minute, let's just think about this. Where are the tech companies, you know, and, we, and they name the unicorn companies and just identifying what a unicorn company is. You know where they're located. You recognize that they're all located in your community. You understand that when you're looking at why your friend got evicted or why you can't find a house and a place to live in, that this is a direct result because of the changes in your community. But right. you also realize that your community is the most innovative, that there would be Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, what would they be without the hip-hop generation? What would they be without young influencers that are black and come from the hood and that are being able to use technology in empowering ways? So you are actually the definition of cool. And everything that you do, the world looks at. So when you decide that you're ready to move into a creative space and use your innovation, your creativity in the technology realm, you're unstoppable. And you can make a lot of money doing it. And when we start connecting those <laughs> dots, it's a wrap. And I think that's the difference for us. And so we just know our mission is about making sure that they walk out of our doors better than they walked in with more skills, a better lens, and more confidence in themselves that they can do anything that they achieve. I, I, I have to tell you, if I, wasn't in tech right, if I wasn't in tech right now, I would after this phone call I would definitely be trying to get into tech. That was <laughs> that was inspiring. If I heard that that what you just said, it would motivate me to get up and say, Where do I sign up? How do how do I how to code? How do I, No, seriously. Uh because what what you just did was is you took you you made them a part of what's going on around them, right? You you showed right. them their place and what's going on around them, even though they may, may not re even realize uh, exactly. that they are part of this, right? That, what you just said, is, is making them aware of their place in technology, their place in, in this industry, uh, and, and in society, all in one, right there. And exactly. that, that, should, that should inspire anybody to get up and say, I, we need to do this, because if not, <laughs> right. yeah, we're missing the bus, really. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So, so um, what, what advice would you give to any other budding nonprofit that is, that, that's interested in, in, in extending your mission and the mission of uh, Hack, Hack the Hood? Yeah, I would, I, would inspire, um, I, I would inspire anybody that's working for on behalf of young people to start thinking about how they're using technology in and outside of the classroom to make sure that, again, you know, a lot of people are sitting and looking at screens. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about looking at screens. I'm not talking about spending our days on social media kind of numbing out. Uh -huh. We have to educate our young people on the back end of those programs, and we have to start thinking about how we're weaving in technology as an educational tool into the classroom and starting at whatever level we're at. There's so much information out there in the field right now. There's great people doing great work. I definitely am always trying to share our work and our best practices and some of our trainings with the public so other teachers can be empowered um, to utilize this work. And so I would just inspire them to start thinking about one or two things that they can start doing um, to start making learning fun and, and use technology at the same time because it's, it's just critical. I mean, you've got 15-year-olds in Africa right now building electric cars. I mean, there's like the competition. Right. That's another part of the future of work. You know, it's flat now. You know, there was a time where you had to outperform the person next on both sides of you and, you know, get the highest grade in your high school and you can go to college. You are competing against the entire world right now. 
and 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 work and getting a piece of paper is insufficient if you do not have the experience and the grit and the determination and the soft skills, social network, navigational capital to go along with it. So the game has completely changed. The the, the jobs that my daughter, who's ten years old, will have have not even been invented yet. There won't be Facebook. It won't be Twitter. As big as these things are to us, it'll be the next thing. And so we have to make sure that we're thinking about technology and we're thinking about the toolbox. What is the toolbox that's going to move our young people to be successful in the 21st century? And technology is critical to that box. Right. I definitely uh, I definitely agree with that 100%. Um, it's 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 funny because you know I, I always um, I always think about you know technology and, the, and and being an engineer I'm I'm used to seeing what goes on you know behind the scenes how things are built how things are put together uh, and I'm always looking to inspire somebody and say you know hey like you know this is this is all you know. This is all fun and, and good, you know, the, the Facebook, the front end part of that. But there is a world that you don't even know about that is making this work uh, that you can be a part of. And the only thing you have to do is you just have to want to dig a little bit further and, and, and find out and, and be a part of this. Um, but, you know, I love that you all are bringing the awareness uh, to young people, because I always say, you know, if you don't know what to do, you're only going to do what you know, right? And if if yeah. we don't if we don't show young people this other world, they're, they're <laughs> never going to know about it. It's the same thing, that, you know. You were talking about a uh, 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 young kid in the hood walking down the street with his with his um, his headphones on, listening to something from Pandora, and they're walking <laughs> right past Pandora and, and knocking the door. And it, exactly. but it, they're, they're not aware of that. Um, and so right. they, they, since they don't know what to do, they're not aware of that. They only do what they know, and that's to walk right past and continue doing what they were doing. And so we have to, as, as, as you know, adults and as technology professionals, I, I think we have an obligation to try to help. I, I'm not saying everybody has to be out front doing it uh, and you know they have to have their face plastered everywhere in order to try to make a difference but i think it's important that we we take some responsibility because you know this other other cultures other races are are doing that and i think that we right. need to be doing that same thing and, and and pulling the next person behind us and saying hey you know this is what this world is and you can be a part of it and you know you don't have to give up who you are and you don't have to change exactly. as a person to to, to be that um, and you can still do that, which is, is, is a good segue into uh, my, my next question about your, your background as uh, uh, in art, in the arts, because I, I have a, I used to be in music. Uh, I went to uh, school for creative and performing arts years ago, uh, but, and I was into, into uh, music for quite a long time. I did a lot of hip hop music. Uh, you know, and but I had other things that I was, you know, uh, that I was interested in. I love comic books. I love technology. Uh, I also love sports. So I love, you know, hip hop. I love sports. I love comic books. I love technology. And one thing that I like to stress to young people, especially when I go and speak, is that that's okay. It's okay for you to love that and still do technology. You don't have to choose one or the other. You can choose both of them. Uh, and 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 make a career out of either or, you know, with, whichever. But you can still have that love and still be who you are, uh, and not have to sacrifice any of that in order to be in technology. So I want to hear from your perspective. You know, how how did the arts kind of shape you, and how did that how did that uh, um, uh, that love that passion transfer over into education and into tech? That's a great question. Well, I, um, I'm a singer and a dancer, and I do some acting as well, and that's always been part of who I was, my identity. You know, I'm in my mid-30s, so like most people, I was taught that you don't do art. You pick a major on, on that list of majors in college, and you go to school, and you get a job, and, and, and I did all that, and I wasn't happy. 
And I think the breakthrough for me was having my daughter. And, and I think motherhood was kind of a rite of passage for me. And I dedicated my life right then and there and said, I'm going to be my completely authentic self. I'm not going to show up at work being one person. After work, I'm another person. On the weekends, right. I'm another person. And I don't even feel comfortable bringing all these realms together because I'm, I'm this kind of split personality. I'm not being holistic. And so that kind of got me to start my first nonprofit, and that was an environmental nonprofit, and we engage youth of color in hip um, in the environment using hip-hop culture. And so I think for me um, – one of the things that I've learned is how each one of the aspects of who we are makes the other aspect even stronger. So I, I bring a All whole right. other lens of teaching to my work because I'm a mother. I also bring a whole other level of, to my work because I'm an artist and I'm able to think about things differently. And we're living in a time right now, and the good news is you have to bring your authentic self to the world right now because we're not living in a compartmentalized world. That paradigm is dying, that linear I do one thing paradigm. And the reality now is if you only do one thing, you're having a difficult time on the planet because doing <laughs> one thing, when that, when that money train and that one thing runs out, you don't have anything else going on, and you're probably not happy and fulfilled in the one thing anyway because you've denied all these other things. So one of the things that we start with at Hack the Hood is we do a strength finder assessment. We, we, we learn that from Facebook. It's something that they do with all their employees. I encourage everybody to Google strength finder assessment. You can take one for free. A strength is something that you love and something that you're good at. So if you love to sing but you're not good at it, it's not a strength. If you're really, really good at math but you hate it, it's not a strength. And the reality is every single one of us was put on earth with a set of strengths, and that's what we should be teaching young people from day one of school. What are your strengths? What are the gifts that you were born with? I'm not talking about what you have to go to school for. What you were born with when you came out the womb, there were gifts that you were given. And school should be a process of define, redefining, sharpening, and making, you know, rubbing that rock of your strength into a diamond. That's the only purpose of school. And we should all be doing our strength. And so we do, we do that assessment with our young people, and they come up with a list of their strengths. They might be a connector. Maybe they're a motivator. One of the strengths is a boss. I'm a boss. That's my strength. Now, whether I choose to be a connector or a harmonizer or an innovator or a futurist in health, if I choose to work in technology, if I choose to be a writer, if I choose to be an artist, I know that these are the unique gifts that I was born with. And then from there, we tell them, I want you to create a life title, not a job title. What is your life title? What is your superhero person? And, and you, you get it all the time. How many of us walk into a room and we ask people, what do you do? And they can't even tell you what they do because don't nobody just do one thing anymore. They're like, oh, I do this and I kind of do that and I do this. And it's like, scratch all that. What is your life title? What have you come here to do? My life title at this point, and I've changed, and that's part of the personal branding, is a cultural architect. I build culture. I might build culture on the stage when I'm singing a song. I might go down to the classroom and build culture when I'm working with young people, and I build culture in my other consulting and my other startup projects. That's what I'm here to do. Everybody else is a client and extension of that. And so I had learned that through my own personal journey, and that was one of the first modules I created for my young people that's connected with personal branding. It's like, you know what? How did I make it? What did I figure out? What would, someone, what would I like to tell my 16-year-old self so they can start thinking about that? And that's the title that they then put on their first website. That's the title that when they stand in a room on a field trip at Google, they can stand up with confidence and say, hey, I'm a virtual analyzer. I'm a connector. I'm a solutions finder. I'm a pathfinder. And they can say it with so much um, confidence, because a job is going to come and go. We're not put here to do jobs, and you're not defined by your job. You could be a janitor. Does that mean that you don't have any worth? And we get so caught up in these identities that are, are imposed on us. And so to come back to your question, you know, that's what inspires me. My journey inspires me. The lessons that I've learned inspire me, that I'm committed to being my holistic, complete, authentic self and bringing my gifts to the world with unapologetic boldness. Uh, so, you know you can move mountains, right? <laughs> <laughs> that you, you're, you're a natural is, – is inspirationalist – is that a word? It's, it's not. I'm making it up right now. <laughs> I'm making it official. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because that's <laughs> – 
inspirationalist because that's powerful. Um, and that's something that young people, they need to hear. They need to know that they can be what they want to be and they don't have to conform uh, to some, you know, they don't have to be put in the box. It's, it's it's interesting that you were talking about the whole superhero thing and going to Facebook and saying, "This is who I am." I was watching a video. <clears throat> I was watching a video uh, with DMC from Run DMC, and he was actually at uh, Google headquarters. And uh, DMC actually, <clears throat> a lot of people don't might not know this, but uh, he was he's really into comic books, and I think he's. He's an artist as well. What I mean, my artist is he he draws, and so you know during the time he in the early years of Run Run DMC, you know he was really a shy kid and he was um, um, you know not outspoken and, and things like that. But he liked to draw and he loved comic books, and so he took that persona of um, or he took that that side of him and he displayed that, that persona through DMC. So he was talking about, you know, how, you know, whenever he would uh, talk about uh, or rap about himself, and uh, he would say the devastating DMC. <clears throat> he, and he said he would pull that inspiration from all these comic books that he would, he would, um, he would read. And that gave him this confidence that he didn't have before uh and that you know kind of opened him up to you know being this presence in hip-hop and now wow. <clears throat> and and being able to you know use that to help control and and you know control the crowd so to speak when, when you're an mc and i thought that's you know that's very interesting that you that you said that because you know you were talking about the, the kids being on facebook and being able to say with confidence, I'm, you know, insert title here, and saying that with that type of confidence. And, and that is, that's just so important to our young kids that, that they can have that, that they do that. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of our youth, they, they don't see themselves in that, in that way. Or, or if they do, they're, they're afraid to, to manifest it, and they're afraid to display that, um, you know, considering, like, you know, where they come from and their background and things like that, it might not be something that is considered cool. So whenever you're able to kind of let that out, uh, it's just <clears throat> just great. Excuse me, it's just great to see and and great to see that you are. T <clears throat> Sorry about that. And great to see that you're okay. that you're touching on that uh, and bringing that out of uh, out of your young people. I think that's that's very great. Thank you. So, so tell us what what a little bit um, about Hack the Hood. What's the, what's the criteria for being accepted into the program? How do you how do you get uh, new members or new students? Yeah, so we recruit through high schools, through other nonprofit organizations, through word of mouth, through social media. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, we're serving young people between the ages of fifteen and twenty four. Um, they fill out an application online. We don't, you don't have to have any prior technical experience, and we really stress that because when you ask people, are you in a technology, a lot of kids are like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, Wait, you're on your phone all day. What are you talking about? They're like, oh, they <laughs> right. don't even make the connection that that's technology, you know. Um, they think they have this notion of, of what that means. So they fill out an application online. Our application process, we're really just looking at, um, what levels of trauma are these young people dealing with? Are they going to be able to successfully complete the program? It is a boot camp, and we say that for a reason. So they're with us in the summer from 9 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday, like a job. Um, so it's intense. Um, and we treat them, it's like an office setting. They have their laptops, they come in, they're meeting with clients, um, we have staff meetings, and they're getting their work done. Um, after the initial uh, online application there's a phone screening and then we have a face-to-face -face interview so we definitely want to okay. vet the right young people we typically take about 25 per boot camp it's about 25 students and three instruct main instructors and then they're in and then they go through the journey that is hack the hood and that again is, is six weeks so um, we are working with young people from throughout the city and like I said we began to expand into some of our neighboring as well 
um, and just had a lot of success. Our goal is to be able to reach more young people um, and to continue and spread the work. It's really, really intense in the summer, and, and even when we do it year-round, it's a very intensive program. Um, right. There's a lot going on, and young people are also bringing in what they're dealing with, you know, and a lot of our young people are facing a lot of challenges, and it's remarkable. It's remarkable despite the challenges. We've had young people who have slept on the bus over the weekend and still made it to work on time. We have a, we've had a variety of young parents who come to work and have to bring their kids and still make it to work on time. People dealing with death and still come to work on time. And we really think it's a testament to the fact that they're around other young people. They're all figuring out together. There's really a community that, that bonds in the boot camp. They all have each other's back. They're all supporting each other. Hey, teach me how you did that. How did you hack that? How did you make that happen? You know, and I, and honestly, what we find is a lot of the projects that come out out of the boot camp after the boot camp is over, it's it's young people that never knew each other before, and now they're like, you know what? We're about to create a video game together, or we're going to launch another project together, and they're building companies and coming up with ideas, or hey, let's go take this coding camp. You want to all take it together so we can support each other and have a study group? And so um, that's wow. where the real magic happens, is that the young people are able to connect and, and have a, a, a community of people where they don't have to feel like they're corny or they're nervous but that gets them right. and that they know that it works. So, yeah. I have to tell you, that's, that's, that is such the foundation of what, um, you know, we're trying to build here or what we're building here at Blackstone Technology as far as an organization, as far as a community. I think a couple of the points that you hit on are, 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 are really, really, uh, you know, strong points. And, and that's, I always, you know, tell people I, I think this is going to take a collaborative and a community type effort uh, in order to make the real changes and the real differences uh, that we really want to see in, in that type of impact. Uh, we Blacks and Technology has over uh, 1,800 uh, members nationwide, even some overseas, and I think the thing that's most important is that we are that we're communicating, that we're collaborating, that we're that we're talking to each other, that we're we're building inspiration with each other, uh with it within this community type atmosphere. And it's good that that you all are doing that with with Hack the Hood. You all are not only teaching these skills, but you're bringing together uh this community and you're you're bringing kids together who might not have ever talked to each other, who might not have ever collaborated with you with each other. And now, what they're doing is they're building communities, and, and they're bringing more people into the fold. Uh, and that's I think that's I think that's how the impact is really going to be made. It's not going to be done everybody being separate, everybody doing their just doing their own thing. It has to be, and, and this is you know my opinion. It has to be more of a collaborative. Uh, effort in order to make these type of impacts because wh when we when we are showing and we're teaching each other we're a lot more comfortable doing that uh, we're, we're not uh, intimidated by doing that we feel um, a lot more secure a lot more trust within each other uh, when it's done as a community because that's what really a community is when, when it boils down to it it's, it's a pocket of you know, people, a pocket of services, a pocket of, of uh, uh, you know, togetherness, and, and everybody trusts each other. That's why when people move into a community, they can say, hey, you know, I know that, you know, that neighbor is, is watching out for my house. Or, you know, I know if I let my kid outside, run outside, you'll be okay because everybody is watching out. That's what a community is supposed to be. And, and it's just good to hear that, you know, that's what, what you all are building, uh, building that hack the hood. Yeah. So, t yeah, so awesome. tell us, give us, give us a couple of of success stories coming out of uh, of Hack the Hood. I know you were uh, you, you're mentioning like people, you know, getting together and then saying, "Hey, let's collaborate on this." It, just give us a maybe a, a couple, if you can. Yeah, I think the biggest one that we're really proud of um, is a group called Game Heads that's grown out of Hack the Hood, and there's a smaller group of young people that are all about video games design and they have launched, you know, they all have dealt with death in their lives and they noticed that when they were deal coping, one of their coping mechanisms was by playing video games. 
Um, these individuals never knew each other before the Hacks Ahead Boot Camp, by the way. And so they decided and got inspired that they were going to create their own video game. But the difference is a lot of video games that they've seen are very violent, and they wanted to have a video game that wasn't as violent and specifically was to help people cope with grief. And so wow. when they completed our program, they were able to go into another fellowship program by a partner. Um, organization of our that we work with called Impact Youth Impact Hub Oakland for Youth, and they were able to incubate the idea and build the build the game. They're still working on building the game. They presented it at the White House, um, which was amazing. They've gone to all the cool. video game conferences um, and spoke about the work, and they're also developing a curriculum. The first place that they want to sell this game is to, to the Oakland Unified School District with the curriculum to say, hey, we have young people dealing with violence in their communities. We're going to give you a way to teach them about video game design while they get to play a video game and address grief at the same time. So that program, I mean, that, that crew, I'm just, we're like super, super proud of. Um, we have another group of young people who um, we went on to, to a college trip from UC Davis. I mean, we had a brother who came in and said, well, we interviewed him. We said, what do you want to do with your life? He said, I'm looking for a warehouse job. We're like, okay. And now he's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the goal, a warehouse job. Um, after he completed the program, we took him to UC Davis. We connected with their engineering department. He said, no, I'm going to be an engineer. Um, and he's now back in college, back in school, going to a junior college to transfer into the community, um, transfer into UC Davis to major in engineering, not that he's passionate about. Um, we have another group of um, um, young students who are all native Spanish speakers and they feel like, you know, the language of technology um, doesn't speak to their demographic. And so they're creating an entire new platform um, around culturally relevant tech language for Spanish people, for Spanish speakers, um, which I think is amazing. Um, and just, you know, a lot of other stories as well. We're also hiring three of our young people to be with AmeriCorps who are going to be working with us full time this year. Um, we have program assistants that have gone off to college. We have a young lady at Howard and another woman at UC Davis. And this summer they come back and work and work at Hack the Hood. So, you know, people don't really, we, if, if you're, you can go as far down this rabbit hole with us as you're willing to go. And I kind of think life is like that right now, right? If you're ready to take it yeah. and go all in, life is going to meet you right there. If you just want to go through the program and there's people who do that and they go through the program for six weeks and they're like, hey, I did that, I'm on to the next. But we have other kids who really come back over and over again who go deeper. Um, one young brother just got a full-time job working at a tech company. We have several young men. Um, who were college graduates. Now, this really flipped me out. They were college graduates and came in, and I look at their application. Why are you here? You graduated from college. But right. they all tended to be first-year generation to go to college in their family, and their families that weren't native English speakers. And so in today's world, if, again, you can go to college. You can get the piece of paper. But did you take the right classes? Did you have a mentor? Did you go on an apprenticeship? Did somebody tell you that, you know, Learn, learn and meet new people or were you just in your bubble because that was a big deal for you, right? Your family didn't know how to give you any other advice other than you going to college. Now you're home in debt, can't get no work, and they're right. like, no, we need half the hood. <laughs> and one of those brothers just got a full-time job. Um, and a couple other ones are, are, are working on some other really cool projects. So, you know, and then we have a whole other group that's getting ready to come back for the Google AdWords certification. Um, and they're going to be participating in that. So it's really sky's the limit. Young people can take it as far as they want to go. Very, very nice. And really, it's what it boils down to it is all, it's all about providing, uh, you know, tech as an option. It's, it's not necessarily saying this is what you should be doing or this is what you have to do. It's really about, you know, here's the option, um, uh, here's another option. Uh, that you can that you can uh, uh, that you can take right. Um, it, it's it's uh, coming from the hood. You know, you, it seems like options are limited, and it's and, and, and most of it is because people aren't aware of, of what those options are. So it's really if you if you make them aware of that option, you know, you, you give them the opportunity uh, 
to decide whether or not this is something that it, they want to do or something that, you know, they they feel like it's one of those things in life that they did and they can move on. Or like you said, some people, they continue to go down a rabbit hole. So that's that's great. Yeah. Um. So how can how can um how can people? No, no, no. I, I want to circle back a little bit. You were you were talking about Impact Hub Oakland, uh, and um, tell us tell us what your role. Well, for one, tell us what Impact Hub Oakland is and what your role uh, is there. So I'm a co-founder of Impact Hub Oakland, and Impact Hub Oakland is a co-working, collaborative community. Our tagline is where change goes to work. So people who are accelerating change, whether they are in the nonprofit world, the for-profit world, the startup world, solopreneurs, startups, we provide a physical space and platform for them to grow. So what that looks like is an amazing um, 16,000 square feet facility in the heart of downtown Oakland. Um, By day, it is a co-working space with a bunch of people surrounding their own laptops and meeting in meeting rooms and having workshops. Um, and doing really cool stuff. We have times where we all eat together. You know, similar to the fun and the kind of innovative work environment that you'll see at a, at a, at a tech company, we've actually created that for regular people. And it works like a gym membership. People pay based on the hours that they want to work there. We also have permanent office spaces. Actually, Hack the Hood has an office there, as does Black Girls Code. So we're also incubating a lot of the really amazing tech work that's happening is located physically in Hub Oakland. And then at night, we have movie screenings. We have workshops. We have films. We have an art gallery. There are many co-working places um, throughout the country and throughout the world. What's unique about Impact Hub Oakland is we're part of a global network of impact hubs all over the world. So hubs started in London. There's over three in London. They're in Europe. They're in Canada. They're in Australia. Um, there's 70 all over the world. Um, they're starting to really, there's one in Johannesburg. I believe there's a hub Ghana. They're even starting to pop up around the world. And we all are also part of our own online community. So we're also engaging with entrepreneurs globally. Um, the other unique aspect of Impact Hub Oakland is it is the only one out of 70 led by an uh, African-American CEO. And we all, I'm, I'm uh, African-American, and we also have three co-founders that are all people of color, um, and majority women, majority of our investors are women. So, um, and majority of the staff is female as well. <laughs> so, and then we're also, you know, incubating all these other really cool projects. So it's really, um, it, it really is called Hub for a Reason. It's kind of a pollinator. We actually had hosted the um, Tech 808 conference there over the summer, which was really okay, cool. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, Hack the Hood has their graduations there. So it's just an amazing, amazing space. And it's really kind of, a platform for people to grow and thrive in the new economy. Very, very cool. I think next time uh, I've been uh, I've been out to the Bay Area twice within the past year. Um, next time I'm out, I'm out there. I have to I have to stop by, take a look, and that'd be that'd be pretty cool. So, um, what what's what's next for what's next for Hack the Hood, and, and what's next for for you? Mm, great question. So Hack the Hood <laughs> is gearing up for, we're, we're continuing to scale. Um, it's been a lot of growth for Hack the Hood. We're bringing in about 10 new staff members over the next uh, 6 to 12 months. We're also oh, wow. having seven new partners next summer. So we're going to go from four boot camps this summer to seven, actually 10 next summer um, in about five different cities in the Bay Area specifically. Right now we're hyper-focused in the Bay Area. And really we just want to continue to deepen our work. You know, we've gotten a lot of asks to do a lot of different things, and I think we've learned that we want to kind of stick to our special sauce and and deepen our impact rather than spreading ourselves thin, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So if there's other great work, we'll partner with them. But for us right now it's about – delivering a kick-ass boot camp, making sure that after those young people go through that boot camp, they're not just left by the wayside. There is additional programs and offerings and support for them to get after the boot camp because we awaken them. We don't want to leave them hanging. And then we're also creating some other programs like the Google AdWords pilot. We're also um, starting to experiment with another pilot called the agency, which will be 
paid clients. So we have paid clients right now who are like, hey, I actually just can't afford a, a main web designer and I'm community centered. I don't have a problem with a young person making my website and I don't mind paying them. <laughs> so in the boot camp, they, all the websites are done for free, but now we're, we're creating an opportunity for young people to come back through us kind of like an agency and we can place clients with young, young people who have um, digital skills. Um, and so Very that's cool. really exciting. So that's next for Hack the Hood, continuing to grow and expand our work. As far as I'm concerned, um, I'm continuing to do my music, and you can check that out on ZakiaHarris.com. Um, I'm recording in the studio. I'm also writing my first ebook, um, which is going to be called Adventures of a Shapeshifter, A Creative Entrepreneur's Guide to Self-Love, Self-Mastery, and Creative Self-Expression. So really bringing my authentic self to the world in a new and powerful way and kind of leveraging and sharing that work as well. So a lot of great things in store for 2016 and beyond. Very, very nice. Um, and, and real quick, uh, one last question before we, we uh, get out of here. How can, if someone wanted to get involved with Hack the Hood as volunteers or whatever, how, 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 do, uh, how does someone go about doing that? You can visit us at hackthehood.org. You can sign up to get a free website. If you're lo located in the Bay Area, you can sign up to be a mentor. You can contact me directly at zakia at hackthehood.org. Excellent, excellent. And I do want to I, I do want to throw this out there. Um, you know, if you if you all need anything from from Box of Technology, uh, if you want to promote something, uh, if you you know need to get the word out about something, uh, just send me an email uh, and and let me know with the details. And we're always happy to you know uh, to partner up and 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 make something happen. You know, like I said, whether that's throwing up a blog on our website about something that's coming up, or or sending a word out through through Twitter or through uh, any one of our uh, social media outlets, you know, we're more than happy to help. So don't hesitate um, to contact us or contact me. So just want to throw Thank that out you. there. I'm glad you did. And when you come back to the Bay Area, I'd love to host you at the hub. Uh, excellent, excellent. So thanks, thanks a lot, Zakia. I uh, want to wish you the best of luck uh, with your your uh, your personal career and uh, in the arts, and as well with um, with Hack the Hood and. Uh, you know, maybe we can do this again and have you back on the show sometime in the future. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me and, and having making the space to listen. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. Bye-bye. And that's it for that. What an inspiring episode, right? Um, she can speak. <laughs> she is definitely a motivator and she definitely inspired me, um, and I hope she inspired people in our audience. Take check check out uh, Hack the Hood at hackthehood.org. Um, also check them out at um, at Hack the Hood on Twitter, uh, and you can check if you are interested in her music. That's zakiaharris.com, uh, and she is also on the Twitters as Zakia L Harris. Uh, and I think that's it. Thanks to all of our listeners. Uh, thanks to our guest, Zakia Harris. And if you like what you heard tonight, you want to let us know. If you have suggestions or comments and just want to say great job or you want to say terrible job, just shoot us an email to contact us at blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, and remember, tech yourself before you wreck yourself. Take care and have a good Blacks and Technology. Black, 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 blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology.